Good morning, friends. Greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have personally seen personally witnessed drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, acne, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is. Are divinely mandated just the way the body works mechanism. We are designed to heal. We're designed to recover. We're designed to renew on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you're dealing with a health challenge and you need help, we're here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones, family members, workmates today as well. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we particularly love hearing those. And if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my website, brightsideben.com, or my blogs, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com, which we update regularly with news stories as well as blog posts, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website, or you can sign up to join me and my mission to educate the world about how important and how functional and how effective a good nutritional supplement program can be. You can sign up right from the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team, 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you're interested in purchasing any of my Truth Treatment products, that's my new skincare products, uh, skin health products, you can go to truthtreatments.com, take a specially long look at the retinol gel, 5% retinol with vitamin C. That's truthtreatments.com. Okay. We're talking skin health. Well, we're, we're talking the health of the whole body, but we're using the skin as an example, as an icon for the health of the whole body. It's a microcosm. If you're not as healthy as you should be, if your skin is not as healthy as you should be, as it should be, chances are pretty good that you're not as healthy as you should be. The key question when we're dealing with a skin problem, the key question when we're dealing with a health problem is what is happening for us right now? We want to forget this. We want to forget our diseases. We want to forget the names of our diseases. Diseases are words. Diseases are concepts. It's about what's happening right now. How do we feel right now? If we're not feeling as well as we'd like to feel, it's important that we don't get lost in the, in the conceptual notion of diseases and words. These are all mental and ideas, and they're not really about what's happening right now now. If you want to get better right now, forget the name of your disease. If you want to feel stronger and healthier and, and have more energy and just feel better right now, it's not complicated. And we can use our diagnoses or we can use our symptoms as a tool to assess whether we're getting better or whether we're getting worse. Dry skin, for example, and we're going to, uh, we're going to talk about dry skin here today and, and for a couple more days. If you have dry skin, you can use your dry skin as a diagnostic measurement to determine or to assess whether you're getting better or whether you're getting worse. If your dry skin improves, you're getting better. 
If your dry skin improves, your health is getting better. You're going to uh, increase your longevity. You're going to decrease your likelihood of autoimmune disease or cancer or any other degenerative disease if your dry skin is improving. If it's getting worse, the opposite is true. So in other words, we don't need to go to a doctor to assess our health. We can look at our dry skin or whatever our symptomology is. The neat thing about the skin is it's so responsive. It changes so fast, for better or worse, that it's like an instant window to what's happening inside our body. Smearing a moisturizer uh, on your skin, a wax, oil, complex, gookie, I've been making these things for a long time, folks. I used to hate making moisturizing creams because I had to wash the dishes when I was in pharmacy school and I was working for Blistex. I was the guy washing the beakers. And I used to hate washing the moisturizers off because they were sticky and they were gooky and I'd have to use dry cleaning solvent and benzene and acetone to get it off the beakers. That's the same stuff we rub on our skin when we have dry skin. If you got skin dryness, the answer is to figure out what's going on. The solution is to figure out what's going on inside the body. Why is this important? Because once we correct what's going on inside the body, not only will our dry skin disappear, but we're going to live longer too and decrease our likelihood, decrease the risks, decrease the odds that we're going to be dealing with some kind of horrible degenerative disease crisis down the road. Now, we've been talking about skin and skin health issues, specifically xerosis, X-E-R-O-S-I-S. That's the technical name for dry skin. Doctors don't say dry skin. They say xerosis. And while almost all adults over the age of 25 or 30 or, or 35 have at least some degree of dry skin, our cultural ideas, our memes, M-E-M-E-S, memes, our belief systems about how to treat it, how to reverse it, how to eliminate dry skin are based on superficial techniques, smearing stuff on the surface, coating the skin with wax and oil, not to mention emulsifiers and perfumes and, and preservatives. By the way, the most toxic ingredient in a skincare product is the preservative because it kills things. Only God knows why we would think it's okay to smear something on our skin that is designed to kill things. <laughs> That's the craziness of the skincare business. A preservative in a skincare product kills things. Yes, bacteria, but bacteria are cells, and your skin is cells. The most important concept about xerosis, or dry skin, and eliminating it forever is recognizing it as the health issue that it is. Not the cosmetic issue, not the topical issue, not the superficial issue, superficial issue but the health issue that dry skin represents. That means number one, nutrition. Essential fatty acids, fatty vitamins, especially vitamin A, and working on your digestive system. Your bowel movements have a lot more to do with your dry skin than any Eucerin or, or Avena or Jennifer Aniston recommended product you could put on. Your digestive system has a lot more relevance and a lot more importance to, to uh, helping you with your skin issues than anything you could ever put on topically. For topical strategies, there are things you could do. You could use omega-3s or omega-6s topically. You could use vitamin A topically, and you could use the vitamin that we've been talking about now for a couple of days topically as well, and that's vitamin C. Vitamin C is the good time vitamin. It's the happy vitamin. Under conditions of, of nutrient deficiency or, or when the body feels like it needs to conserve its nutrients, that is when we're deficient, and almost everybody is unless they're supplementing, Present company excluded, of course, because if you're listening to this program, chances are you know about supplementation, you know about dietary strategies. Those of you guys listening to this program right now are the upper 1% of the population when it comes to understanding how to use nutrition, how to use health. The upper half percent. That means 99%, 99.5% of the folks out there have no idea how to use topical nutrients, or how to use nutrients, which means... 99 to 99.5% of the population is going to be deficient, which means that the body is going to be redirecting nutrients away from the skin towards the viscera, the internal structures, the internal organs. If you're deficient in vitamins, and most people are, you're deficient in nutrition, and most people are, the nutrients that should be delivered to the skin to keep it moist and soft, to keep it wrinkle-free, to keep it healing, to keep it healthy, are going to be redirected to the heart and to the bone and to the digestive tract and all the other more critical organs of the body. Thus, the stupendous value of using topical vitamins for skin, including and especially topical vitamin C. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're coming back with more good health information and your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number on The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, 
welcome back to the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in our next segment. 844-236-6010. If you uh, want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, recommended on the program, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com or to products directly off the website. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, also criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, let's see. So we're talking vitamin C, vitamin C as it regards skin health, specifically as it regards moisturizing the skin. Vitamin A and vitamin C, the dynamic duo of topical skincare vitamins, tells the body it's safe. That means there's lots of food and lots of resources, and that means it's okay to grow. Especially, it's especially okay to grow the barrier, the skin barrier. The skin, uh, the skin is made up of, of multiple layers, and the surface, uh, the barrier, the barrier surface technically called the stratum corneum, is the key player in many, many skin health issues, including skin dryness. Skin dryness is largely a skin barrier issue. It also has to do with skin sponges. I call them sponges, but they're really little molecules that suck up water. They're located in the, uh, throughout the skin, but especially in the top of the skin, in the surface of the skin, in the barrier part of the skin. Vitamin C is involved in stimulating the production of the skin barrier, stimulating the production of skin sponges. Yes, internally, vitamin C is very important. Super important. Everybody needs 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 milligrams a day in divided doses. If you use the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, you'll get 1,000 milligrams. 1,000 milligrams in a daily dose of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It's one of the best skin moisturizers, internal skin moisturizers you can use. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine, all nutrition, but especially the BTT because it's liquid. Vitamin C tells the body it's okay to expend its resources on building things. Vitamin C is the quintessential protection molecule, protects us against the sun. Way more important, way, capital W, way more important for protecting the skin from the sun than any toxic poison. Yes, I said toxic poison sunscreen you could put on your skin. A, tell that to your dermatologist, by the way. Your sunscreen is a poison. Octomethoxycinamate, oxybenzone, avobenzone, octocrylene, whatever the heck you want to put, a sunscreen is a poison. It's a toxin. If you ate it, you would die. Ask your dermatologist if he wants to eat a little sunscreen. See what he says. Now, zinc oxide is not necessarily a toxin, although the things they put with the zinc oxide could be a problem. But in any case, the best way to protect your skin is by using internal nutrients. If you want to go topical, use vitamin C. Vitamin C is an internal protection molecule and a topical protection molecule. It provides the body Provide cells with security and with safety, which is all important for initiating the mechanisms of growth. The body has to feel safe and secure, like a baby, like a human being, like us. The body, parts of the body, the skin, the organs, these are microcosms of us. And just like we need to feel safe, that's the ultimate need for a human being is to feel safe. If you have a relationship with somebody and it's not going as well as you'd like, probably somebody doesn't feel safe. If you're in a marriage or you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or you have a problem with your kid or your, or your dog or your neighbor or your boss, chances are somebody doesn't feel safe. Well, likewise in the body. When we're sick, our body doesn't feel safe. When our organs are sick and we have a, a, a distressed or diseased organ, it doesn't feel safe. Nutrition helps the body feel safe. And vitamin C represents, is an icon for safety. It's the key safety nutrient. All nutrients help the body feel safe. That's what nutrition is about. That's what all the strategies we're talking about here, whether it's breathing or whether it's fasting or whether it's dietary modification or whether it's nutritional supplementation or whether it's a spiritual or a mental strategy or an emotional strategy, they're all about making our bodies, helping our bodies feel safe. Vitamin C represents safety. It is a protection molecule. It's the main water-soluble protection molecule especially for the sun. It deactivates solar energy. You know, there's different ways you can protect yourself from the sun. You can screen the sun. That's called, you, know, you can use a product called a sun screen. A screen sort of electrically modifies photons, sun energy. It dampens solar energy. It dulls it. It deactivates it electronically, which is why sunscreens are so, such a problem because they're electrically active. You can reflect the solar energy. That's called a sun block. 
zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Those are your main sunblocks. They're a heck of a lot better for you than, than a sunscreen, which is electrically active. Those are the ones that are really the problems. Although, as I said, sunblocks, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are sometimes made with other things to coat the particles to make the particles easier to work with from a formulation or a manufacturing standpoint, those can be problematic. They're certainly not going to be as problematic as, as your sunscreens. Octomethoxycinamate is the main one. It's about probably 70% of sunscreen products. Those are your super high SPF products. They, those tend to be sunscreens. You know, there's, we should talk about SPF. You know, I think I'll talk about SPFs tomorrow. Um, and by the way, I'm blogging on my Facebook page with uh, little blurbs, little, little tips for taking care of your skin. That's the Truth with Ben. That's my Facebook page for my truth products. And we blog on there, try to get on there every couple of days anyway, with, uh, with little health tips. Sunscreens, sunscreens are active chemicals and your super high SPF products, your 70s, your 60s, your 50s, those are going to have sunscreens in them. Sometimes they'll throw in a little sunblock, which as I say is not as toxic. Zinc oxide is probably the best, at least it's healing. The third way to protect your skin from the effects of the sun is to use topical nutrition, which will have anti-inflammatory benefits and ultraviolet uh, protection benefits, protect us from UV rays. It won't screen the skin necessarily or screen rays necessarily, it won't block rays necessarily, but it can allow the skin to protect itself more effectively, more efficiently. That's my favorite way to treat the skin. That's my favorite way to do everything, uh, to create all health changes in the skin, including sun protection. To have healthy skin, to understand how to have healthy skin, to understand how to use ingredients, we kind of kind of look at the skin a little differently than we're used to looking at, uh, at the skin. You know, a big part of this program, The Bright Side, is looking at the body differently than the, uh, the cultural ideas and most people look at the body. When we look at the body, we look at it based on its cellular nature, not so much as different organs. When we look at it on the bright side, we don't look at it necessarily in terms of the different organs. We look at it in terms of distinctions that are either cells and stuff. I said this so many times, the body's made up of cells and stuff, just two major components, cells and the stuff that's secreted out of cells. And if you have a disease, you have a cell disease. So really, it doesn't make sense to think about the gallbladder or the nerves or the brain or the liver or the digestive system if you're interested in reversing degeneration. We want to look at the cells. We want to look at cells and stuff. It doesn't matter if it's a gallbladder cell or a pancreas cell or a, or a brain cell or a nerve cell or any other cell. All cells need the same thing, whether the cell's in your gallbladder or it's in your little toenail. All cells need the same thing. Toenails actually are made up of protein stuff. They're not cells, but you know what I'm saying. It doesn't matter where the cell is. All cells need nutrition. They need detoxification. They need oxygen. That's pretty much it. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification. Now, another distinction you can make in terms of, uh, in terms of the body is the four main tissues. Connective tissue, muscle tissue, heart tissue, or uh, uh, connective tissue, muscle tissue, nerve tissue, and coating tissue. It's called epithelial tissue. Most diseases involve connective tissue and muscle tissue. So working on connective tissue and muscle tissue is much more, uh, can be much more helpful than focusing on the different organs. And when it comes to the skin, contrary to appearances, appearances can be deceiving, the skin is made up of layers. And this is really important because each layer has its own function and each layer is respons responsive to slightly different strategies, especially the surface layer. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we got a f bunch of open lines for you at 844-236-6010. Kind of an unusual situation, so if you try to get on uh, on the bright side, if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs and you haven't been able to, now is your opportunity. Got all empty. Uh, got a empty bank of phones here at 844-236-6010. Uh, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And of course, if you want to purchase my new truth treatment, skin health products, and I say skin health for a reason because it really is about the health of the skin, beauty follows health. Form follows function, they say in, in uh, architecture. And likewise, beauty follows health. You've got to have a fully functioning skin or organ system, a skin organ system, I should say, to have a functionally beautiful 
and attractive skin. The skin is an organ of communication. Why do you think people are so fascinated with skin? Why do you think we spend so many billions and billions of dollars with skin? It's funny because we seem to care more about our skin than we care about any other part of the body. And in a way, the skin is the least at least compared to the heart and the lungs, it's the least of, uh, I don't want to, I shouldn't say that. It's obviously, it's very important, very functional. All the, all the systems in the body are functional. In any case, the skin is an organ of communication and the skin is part of the brain. The skin is like a satellite of the brain. It's an extension of the brain. It's a constantly informing the brain in a kind of like a, a satellite fashion like a scout, it's constantly scouting the environment and telling the brain what's going on. The brain, the, the skin is filled with, with neurochemicals, with neurohormones, serotonin, for example, uh, high levels of serotonin. There's also uh, sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone in the skin. And there's also uh, what are called catecholamines. These are, these are the uh, neurotransmitters, nerve chemicals of stress, nerve chemicals of emergency, cortisol, epinephrine, adrenaline, these are all in the skin. Dopamine, pleasure hormone, pleasure chemical, that's in the skin. The skin is also, this is the most important thing probably about the skin, and well, we'll talk about layers here in a little bit, but uh, one of the most important uh, factoids about the skin, and one that's underappreciated, is that the skin is part of the immune system. I got this textbook I'm looking at right here. I collect skin textbooks. That's one of my little hobbies. And uh, I got a textbook, Skin Immune System immunology in the skin. The skin is an immune organ, like the digestive system. Between the skin and the digestive system, you have the vast majority of your immune system. Why do you think the number one medication that you get from a doctor, from a dermatologist, from a skin doctor, is a steroid cream? What does a steroid cream do? It works with the immune system. That's how a steroid cream works. Prednisone cream and dexamethasone cream and beta-methasone cream. These steroid creams that you get for eczema and psoriasis and pretty much all skin health issues, because that's all dermatologists have, that's all they got is an antibiotic, in terms of drugs anyway, antibiotic and a, pred and a steroid cream. Steroid creams work because they suppress the immune system, just like internal steroids work by suppressing the immune system. The skin is, an Im is part of the immune system. It's an immune organ. It's filled with immune chemicals, filled with inflammatory chemicals. It's an inf inflammation is immunity. I got a, a Facebook post here from a gal. Uh, she says to me, uh, she writes, uh, hello, I'm looking for information on how to reduce inflammation in the body. Well, we hear, it's understandable she's asking for this because we hear about inflammation all the time. Anti-inflammatory this, anti-inflammatory that. Doctors suspect inflammation's behind everything. What is inflammation really? Inflammation is flame. And if you go to medical school, they tell you inflammation is dolor, rubor, tumor, calor, which is Latin, because doctors love Latin, as if they speak Latin. So anyway, Latin is, uh, is the language of medicine. Uh, the four elements of inflammation, dolor, Latin for pain, calor, Latin for heat, rubor, Latin for redness, and tumor, Latin for in, uh, growth, and those are the elements, uh, division, cell division, if you will. Those are the elements of inflammation. I call it a beaver's dam. Inflammation represents the body's attempt to protect itself. This is the most important. If, I, if you turn this program off right now and never listen to the bright side again, you will know more about health than any doctor, and you'll be able to doctor yourself more effectively than any representative of the medical model simply by understanding this, what I'm going to say right now. Inflammation is defense. Inflammation is a defensive response. It's a protective response. And there's different kinds of inflammation. You got macro, two kinds of inflammation. You got macro, which is the kind big, macro meaning big. That's the kind of inflammation that happens if you get punched in the eye. You get a swollen eye, a black eye, or if you twist your ankle and you get a swollen ankle. That's macro inflammation. But there's another kind of inflammation that occurs at the level of a cell. That's called micro inflammation. But it's the same thing. It's just happening in a much, in a microscopic fashion, in a much smaller way. Microinflammation is a defensive response like macroinflammation is a defensive response. If you twist your ankle and there's damaged tissue, the body will protect itself from that damaged tissue by building a beaver's dam around the little the tear in your Achilles tendon or wherever you got your sprain or your, 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 wherever you messed up your ankle or your knee or any other part of the body. Microscopically, the same thing happens. If a cell is damaged, if a cell is not dividing correctly, if it's sluggish, if it's diseased, the body will wall it off. It will protect itself. That's called microinflammation. 
And that's the beginnings of the disease process. The bottom line here is it's a defensive response. Inflammation is protection. It's a good thing. It's the chronic inflammation that's the problem. You guys see this distinction here? It's not the inflammation. It's the chronic inflammation. It's the over and over again for many of us from the time we're born. For many of us in utero, in the womb beginning. Can you imagine this? No wonder why we're so sick. No wonder why our culture is, uh, despite the fact that we got more medicine and more doctors and more drugs and more diagnostics and more high tech than any other culture on the history of mankind, we're the sickest and the fattest and the most chronically diseased because we don't understand this basic mechanism of defense. The body's protecting itself. That's why we're sick because it's chronically protecting itself. Chronic protection, chronic lack of safety. Safety is at the bottom line here. Always, always, always safety. The body's protecting itself because it doesn't think the world is safe. It doesn't think the world is safe because there's no nutrition. There's no, physically anyway, there's no nutrition. There's no oxygen and poison, especially sugar, which is a poison, is building up. It isn't that complicated. That's the good news. It isn't that complicated. We complicate things. We make it way more complicated than it needs to be. 844-236-6010 is our number. On in California. Did I say that right? On? Yes. O-N? Hi, On. Hi. How you doing? I'm Better? doing great. I met you a couple of yeah. times. It's actually on tune, but I just got up by on. I wanted to ask you about, you were talking yesterday on Dr. Wallach's program about heating food high and burning. We talked about microwaves, I think we were talking about. Is that what you mean? Well, I don't know, but I wanted to ask you about pressure cookers. What you, what's uh, yes. Your take on pressure, cookers? pressure. Yeah, pressure is one of the ways you generate heat. Uh huh. Pressure generates heat, so a pressure cooker works by generating heat via pressure. As long as you're generating heat, as long as you're generating heat, you're going to break down the molecules. So, yeah, even a pressure cooker, I'm pretty sure. Now, some I don't know a lot about pressure cookering pressure cooking. I've never pressure cooked, actually. Uh, but pressure generates heat, and I'm assuming that if there's heat, you know, it doesn't really matter whether it's generated by pressure or generated by anything else. You follow me? It's the heat that's the problem. If it's heat, if it's hot, it's a problem. Now, pressure cookers make the food hot, right? Yes. Then you got I a problem. Hang on. Uh, we got to take a break. Hang on okay. on. Hang on on, okay? Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm talking to On about pressure cookers. Hey, On. Yes. Pressure cookers actually, because of the pressure, I did a little research during the break here, because of the pressure, they actually get hotter. So, yeah, you're going to have the same problem with a pressure cooker. Okay, I just... Heat is the enemy of nutrition. Heat is the enemy of nutrition, especially B vitamins and your energy nutrients. B vitamins and vitamins... Really, no, I shouldn't say especially. All nutrients are going to be deactivated by heat. Uh, to the extent that you're getting hot, your your to the extent that your food is getting hot, does that help you? On? Yeah. Uh, yes. Can I ask you another question? What What do you think about those ceramic uh, nonstick pans? Ah, uh, if they're yeah, just ceramic, they yeah. If they're just ceramic, that's probably okay. But Teflon could be a problem. I imagine okay. theoretically, anyway. Teflon has fluoride in it. It's It's a minor problem, though, compared to all the other crap we're drinking and eating. It's really not the most significant thing to concern concern ourselves about. Uh, although it's you know, I would stay away from nonstick unless ceramic is shouldn't be a problem unless they coat it. You know, you have to see what they're coating it with. It depends on the product, pretty much. But you do want to, it's something you want to think about, but there's lots, you have bigger fish to fry, uh -huh. as okay. they say. Well, okay, thank thanks, Thank you so on. much for the info. Okay, good deal. Have a beautiful day. Bye bye. Thank you, you too. Bye. Okay. I forgot, I didn't tell you about uh, inflammation. This gal wrote me about how do you reduce inflammation. So we said inflammation is a defensive response, right? So here's the deal. You eliminate what the body's trying to defend itself from. It's the only question we need to ask if we want to get rid of inflammation or we want to reverse any kind of chronic, long-term, long-standing disease process. What is getting into the body physically as well as mentally and emotionally and spiritually? What is getting into the body that's causing it to not feel safe? Ideas can make the body not feel safe. 
jealousy and, and uh, emotions, anger can make the body not feel safe. I don't listen to anything or read stuff about you know, information that's not going to help me, that's not going to encourage me to feel safe. I want to know how I can get stronger and better, not what's wrong. I want to know what's right. And really, that's kind of the key here. We have to allocate our attention more consciously and more with, with more, with, with more, uh, st- with a, a more effective strategy. We have to allocate our attention in a way that makes us better. So we want to look at what's going on right in our lives. We want to look at where we're strong and where we're powerful, not on where we should be scared. The body doesn't do well when it's scared. The body shuts down when it's scared. We don't grow when, it's, when we're scared. The best wrinkle cream in the world is not feeling scared. You're not going to be able to make collagen to, to fight wrinkles if you're in fear mode. You're not going to make collagen to make bone if you're in fear mode. We don't feel safe. Our cells don't feel safe. Our bodies don't feel safe. Our minds don't feel safe. And by the way, this is what being saved is really about in a non-religious way. I'm not talking here religious, but salvation and being saved is feeling safe. That's a cool word, safe, safety, save. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten. Sherry in Kansas, what's going on? Hi, Ben. Hey, good morning. Really How you doing? Learn a lot listening to your show. I appreciate, oh, I appreciate it. it. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Hey, what's... I've got a couple of joints on my hand. One of my hands that um, it's not at the knuckle. It's the one farther, the joint farther out from the knuckle. Uh, okay. On two fingers that they're. Swollen, they won't go away, but they don't hurt, and they've been swollen for a long time. And I was okay. just wondering, is is there You're, a way to make them go down to normal? Yeah, something's percolating in there. Now, either it's mechanical; it could be some kind of repetitive motion issue, or it could be um, it could be something you know locally that you you may have twisted your hand in some way. I don't, you know, even then it should heal. That tells me that the body's not recovering as it should, which means there's some kind of burden going on in the system. The system is not healing itself. There's a chronic long-term assault on the body, something that's happening over and over and over and over again. And now how are you going to know that? How, this is, well, work with me here, Sherry, okay? You have uh, 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 inflammation that's not going away. That means something is happening over and over and over again, right? Make sense? So, Follow me? We're, yeah. Well, hang on. Don't jump ahead. Work with okay, me here, okay? Okay, okay. okay. Um, so if you have a chronic condition, that means something's happening over and over again. Are you with me? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so if something's happening over and over again, how are we going to figure out, you, you agree that if something's happening over and over again and causing us a problem, we want to know what that is, right? We yeah. want to know what's happening over and over again. What are we doing to ourselves over and over and over again that's causing that? So we're, you're working with me here, right, Sherry? Yeah. Okay, all right. So we're doing something or something's getting into our body over and over and over again. How are we going to find out what that is? Well, first we could guess, I suppose. We could say, well, maybe it's like a dust in the air. Maybe it's something I'm breathing. We could, we could guess, right? And that's one way of doing it. A lot of people do do it with guesswork or beliefs. But more appropriately, we could actually see what's happening in our body. All right? So how do you see what's happening in your body? You look for symptoms. You with me, Sherry? Yes. We look for symptoms in the body. We scan, we search, we look for where things are happening in our body. We have to become vigil- vigilant about our body's processes. Every time you feel a belly ache, every time you have constipation, every time you feel fatigued, every time you feel some way you shouldn't feel, see what's happening. What did you do an hour before you have your constipation? What do you do? What did you do two hours before you have a migraine headache? What did what happened in your life three hours before your shoulder flared up? You follow what I'm saying? We link, we find our symptoms, then we link them to things that we're doing. That's how you do it. It's as simple as that. You find your symptoms, and then you link it to things you're doing. Now, you have one symptom. That doesn't give you enough information. I always say you got to triangulate. you got to have three points, at least. You want more. Remember Bob Ross? Do you know who Bob Ross was? No. He was an artist. He was an artist on TV. He would draw. He would paint, and he'd show you how, to, how easy it was to paint. He put a dot in the middle of the canvas, and you say, okay, there's a dot in the middle of the canvas. That doesn't tell you anything. But then he put two dots, and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. That could be, and then he put three, and you say, oh, my God, it's a tree. You follow me? And as you collect the dots, you start to form a picture of what's happening in the body. 
The dots are symptoms. Search for symptoms. Once you get the symptoms, once you find the symptoms, look for things you're doing that are associated with the symptoms. Things that you did an hour, two hours, or three hours before those symptoms happen. Especially digestion. Digestion and skin are going to be the two best places to assess what's happening. Are you with me? Yes. Digestion and skin. So if you have a, now, don't tell me how old you are, but just tell me about how old you are. Um, in my 40s? early 60s. Six, early 60s. Okay. Are you going to sit there and tell me, Sherry in Kansas, my dear, you sound very nice and you're playing along with me. Are you going to sit there and tell me the only thing that you've noticed that's going wrong with your body is a couple of swollen fingers? Sherry? No, but I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking it's actually from... Mechanical? Motion. Oh, I mean, it could be, but you still should I be... Could, I can see that, you know, if you're not eating right... More, more important, Sherry. you're not replacing Sherry. what you're using up... That more could, that could have that's involved there too but sherry when you were six years old were you not moving your fingers the same way were you not moving your fingers as much did you have swollen fingers when you were six and seven and eight and nine and ten no I right wasn't using them in the way i use them now okay well then maybe it has something to do with it then that's conceivable but the joints are designed to do work and if you have an inflammation or swell swelling in there you're, you're on your own how you want to handle it. I'm not telling you what to do. But if you think it's mechanical and you're not addressing the inside, you're missing a key place to work. And I'm going to move on. i, I got a couple okay, other calls thanks. I want to get to. Thanks. Take care. All right. Sometimes we're just resistant to hearing things, you know. If you got a problem that's chronic, rest assured you're doing something. And that's not a in way of judging anybody. That's just saying this is where your power is. This is where your control is. There's so much you can do. Not about judging anybody, not about bad person, good person. It's about what we can do to restore ourselves back to our God-given, divinely mandated state of health, wellness, regeneration, youth, and joie de vivre, joy for life. All right, Rose in Virginia, you get the last word. What's your words of wisdom here, Rosie? Thank you, um... Ben, we appreciate all your wisdom in the Thank comes you. from above and that you share with us your, your good intention. Thank and, you. I appreciate that. I know that, that, that this uh, call or she will understand um, reflecting on the whole conversation. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, I met the other day this car mechanic and he mentioned to me that he had a kidney infection. Infection? And, yeah. Okay, now infection's a little bit different. Infection is a bacterial invasion. And under conditions of infection, you got to kill the bacteria. This is an emergency condition relative, depending on how bad the infection is. It's a relative emergency. I'm talking, when I talk about the strategies we're talking about here, for the most part, are chronic degenerative. That is, they happen over the course of time. They don't get better. They degenerate rather than regenerating. Now, infections, that's when you pull out the pharmacopoeia and you go with uh, antibiotics, if, depending on how severe the infection is. Now, kidney disease, that's a little bit different. And, uh, Kidney, kidney problems are an epidemic, and it is a really big issue, and it has to do with filthy, dirty, toxic blood. That's why diabetics have a problem with kidney disease, because sugar represents a toxin. All right, so much to talk about here on The Bright Side. We'll continue discussing skin, talk about a major distinction when it comes to skin health. We'll do that tomorrow on The Bright Side. Check out my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben, and my new Truth Skin Health products truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening. Listen and folks have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.